All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. I know folks are out milling around. Okay, so I was out in the lobby just a little bit ago, and it was fun just to step and uh, to hear folks just talk and laugh and have a great time, and so that is absolutely fantastic. And if uh, you ever get a chance to come a little bit early and hang out and drink coffee and and get a chance to talk. That is phenomenal. I love the sound of the buzz out there. I was kind of excited to see all that out there today. But we are going to start on time, all right? So we realize people come in a little late. That's okay. I, hey, I don't know if you noticed or not, but there's a shining thing in the sky that we haven't seen in a while outside. And so it's kind of nice that on a Sunday uh, that it's sunshiny and it's nice. My car didn't know how to work without those windshield wipers going back and forth, so uh, I was excited to see that today. And so, uh, you know, the Lord and I always have this conversation about rain and inclement weather on Sundays. I don't know why that happens sometimes. Maybe it's to find out who's really, who's really in and who's really out. I don't know, but nonetheless... We're glad that you're here. We're going to go ahead and get started, uh, and then we're going to jump in uh, and, uh, and have a great time worshiping the Lord. So if you would, let's bow forward to prayer, and then we're going to go ahead and get started today. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for today, and we give you praise, and we give you glory, and we thank you for the time that we've got uh, to be able to be together. Father, we thank you for your love for us, your great and wonderful love that we see all through Scripture. But especially, Father God, as we see Jesus come on the scene, and we know that your word is all about your Son who's come to redeem us. And so today, we desire to sing, uh, sing our lungs out, Father God, for you, for what you've done for us, to point our attention and our affections towards you, to let you know how great and how wonderful and how mighty you really are. And so, Father, today, we just want to sing with all of our heart. And we recognize that you're the one you're the one that is our audience today. That as we sing, we want to sing right to you. And so, Father, help us push everything else out to the side. All the things that we got to do this, this coming week, all the things that happened to us this past week, and even, even uh, the, some of the things that we anticipate even in the service. Father, we push those out in order just to, just to keep our mind and our, 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 our vision on you. And so, Father, we pray that you will be pleased by our worship today. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this place. And thank you, Lord God, for who you are. We give you this service, Father. It is totally yours. It's in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Before we start, uh, Tom, is, is Tom still out there at the door? If you are, tell everybody else to get on in here. Because <laughs> I, I just came from out there, and there was like a major crowd out there, like Art was talking, just out there talking and lollygagging and everything. It's time to worship. Come on, y'all, get on in here. Come on now. Come on. I, I mean, I like talking too, but now let's talk to the Lord. Come on, Kemper. Can we do that? Go ahead, Scooter. Come on, put your hands together, just like this. Your wisdom in love and 
today. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm all over the place. King of endless words, there's no crown above you. Take your rightful place here in my life, here in my life. God of boundless love Tearing down my idols Every battle won Here in your light, here in your light Come and change my heart Show me who you are I want to be like you I want to be like you, take my heart, my soul, I give you control, I want to be like you, I want to be like you, oh, 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 yeah. Center of my world. Nothing comes before you There's no place I'd rather be Found in your name, found in your name Found in your name, found in your name Come and change my heart Show me who you are I want to be like you I want 
wanna be like you. Take my heart, my soul. I give you control. I wanna be like you. I wanna be like you. Let's go, y'all. Let your heart be our heart. Let your will be our will. Jesus, Jesus, more of you. Let us see what you see. Let your dreams be our dreams. Jesus, Jesus, more of you. Let this house shake with praise as the church shouts your name. Jesus, Jesus, more of you. Let our hands lift it high. We surrender our lives. Jesus, Jesus, more of you. Come and change my heart. Show me who you are. I want to be like you. I want to be like you. Take my heart, my soul. I give you control. I wanna be like you. Come on, take it up. This church shot with praise as the tent shouts your name. Jesus, Jesus, more of you. With our hands lifted high, we surrender our lives. Jesus, Jesus, more of you. See you. 
I'll never know. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin. Hey guys, good morning. Hey, we're, we're ecstatic that, that y'all are here this morning with us worshiping. Uh, before we get into our offering this morning, I've got a few announcements. Um, if you haven't joined a C group, uh, do that. It, it really is awesome. Uh, it'll take your, your faith in Christ to the next level. Uh, when you get to get around a table with a, um, another, a, a small group of um, Christians and just discuss what you're going through and, what, and, and how your faith is going. It'll really take your faith to that next level. Um, also, high school and middle school students, uh, more importantly parents, to sign up for CIY, you need mix or move. Uh, you need to register online um, through the website, through the students page, and then turn in your deposit uh, to me. You can either turn in your deposit or the, the whole amount by um, April 30th, if if that's the end of the month, or if April has 31 days, then 31st, but I think it has 30. Um, someone correct me on that. 30? 30, yeah. Okay, so April 30th is the deadline for CIY, and we, we do it early, one, because CIY sells out, and a lot of them are already sold out, but two, because last year we had 40 kids go, and so we need to know how many buses to get or vans to get um, and how many adults we need to have, so please turn that in at the latest um, April 30th. Um, and if you want to go, if you're a high school and middle school student and want to go to North Georgia Christian Camp as well, you register through their website online. Um, you have a little more time with that, but don't, don't let one of those slip by. Um, that is it, and I'm going to pray for our offering, and then we're going to get in church. God, thank you for this time uh, where we get to just come before you this morning, Lord, and uh, glorify you uh, for who you are and what you've already done for us. Use um, our offering, Lord, to further your kingdom. Uh, in your church. Thank you just for allowing us to be a part of that um, and, and walk in the ways that you want us to walk uh, individually and also as a group. Uh, again, thank you just for sending your son uh, to die on the cross so we can spend uh, now and forever with you. In your name we pray. Amen.
So we welcome you today to MC3. We're glad that you are here. Uh, and um, we are going to wrap up a, a sermon series we started just a few weeks ago. Uh, but before we do that, I, there's a little housekeeping we have to do. And I don't, always, I don't often get a chance to do this because a lot of times I don't know. Uh, but today I did find out that it's Jenny Singleton's birthday today. So, um, Jenny, there's the bus. You were, you were thrown underneath it. Uh, and so uh, we're, we're going to sing happy birthday to Jenny. And if it happens to be your birthday today too, or if you have a birthday, just conclude this in, okay? So here we go. Ready? Here we go. Yeah. What's, what's that? Oh, yeah, Jenny, you got to stand up. So, yeah, there you go. I, I know this may ruin your witness protection, but nonetheless, all right? So, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Very good. So, now... For some of you may go, man, I hope they sing to me on my birthday. I'm going to tell somebody. For, other, uh, for some of you, you're probably like, oh, I'm going to sink down in my seat to make sure they don't know it's my birthday, right? So anyways, happy birthday, Jenny. I hope you have a great day today. Uh, hey, listen, we, uh, next week, here's the thing. Next week, we're going to start a brand new series. And so if you're here today, that's awesome. But come back next week uh, because we're starting a new series, especially as we start to inch towards Easter. Next week's sermon series, we're calling Invite. Uh, and we are going to be looking at the passage of Scripture where Jesus invited people to do something, uh, to come follow me, uh, to go sell all your possessions, all those types of things. So we're, uh, the sermon series is called Invite. And each Sunday... We want you to walk out of here with someone in your brain, someone different that you want to invite to come be a part of, of what happens here on Sunday mornings at MC3. Uh, and so we hope to be as creative as we can to get people, uh, get you to invite uh, some of your friends, some of your family, uh, perfect strangers, that sort of thing. But we want to make sure that we invite people. You know, we're a church that our vision is to reach the one who's lost in our community. And it's hard to reach that one if we're not going out and rubbing elbows with them and saying, hey, listen, I'd love for you to come and join me uh, at, at church. Uh, and, and they may go, ah, church, I don't know about church. Uh, um, you know, all they do is talk about money at church. Well, in the next few weeks, we won't do that, right? Although today we are, but nonetheless, okay? But in the next few weeks, we won't be doing that. So and we want you to uh, rub elbows with people. Just invite them to come and be a part of things. And the great thing is, after the invitation, and, they, and if they come, they might have an opportunity for you to be able to minister to them if they don't know much about Jesus or haven't been in church for a long time or maybe even ever. Uh, I, know, I know we're in our community, you've probably heard, heard us say this from stage, in, in our world, in our, in our nation, now we're finding people that are two generations removed from being at church, which is kind of weird to think about, but that's just kind of the way things are. So next week, don't miss, don't miss it, don't miss it, okay? I'm not so sure the sun will be shining next week, but we'll be, be, be meeting here next week. So you come here and be a part of things, and so we're, we'll get started uh, on sermon here in just a second, but I want to make sure that you know that, just to make sure you invite your friends and your family. So we have been mentioning all along, we've kind of called this series Fixer Upper, and we've said that um, I'm a fixer upper. In other words, I'm, I, the Lord's not through with me yet. You're a fixer upper. The Lord's not through with you yet. That all of us, all of us are in transition, right? We're, we're, we're being worked on by the Lord. None of us are perfect. None of us are, uh, we're, uh, we're uh, as um, as one author put it, we're one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. Uh, I remember there's an, old, there's an old song we used to sing as kids uh, at, back at Windfall Christian Church many moons ago. Uh, where it, so the song went like this, he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. You know, he, he made the, uh, the, the sun, the moon, the stars, and uh, 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 earth, and Jupiter, and Mars. He's still working on me. And then the song would go, how patient he must be, because he's still working on me. On me. Maybe you've heard that song before. Maybe you've sang that song before. Miss Wendy, do you know that song, don't you? Oh, you don't? That is incredible. Okay. So now that's a, that's a new one. That'll be, you'll be singing it in Mexico before too long. So absolutely. So, uh, but I remember that song as a kid. And it's a reminder that we're never, 
we're never going to be perfect. And we may strive for it, we may strive to do what God wants us to do, but we'll never, ever be perfect. And so we have been looking at the book of Nehemiah to, to ask ourselves, so if, if I am a part of the church, and if I build up me, and you're a part of the church, and you build up you, or the Lord builds you up, okay, the Lord builds me up, the Lord builds you up, then when we come together as a church, we're a strong church because the Lord has built we up, right? Uh, and so the, the church is only as strong as the individuals in the church. It's only as strong as the individuals. That has nothing to do with the building, right? Has nothing, we've, we've, we kind of defined that, right, here at MC3. Has nothing to do with building or anything of that nature. Has everything to do with you and me allowing the Lord to work through us so that we might impact the people that are around us. And so the more I pray, the more you pray, the stronger the church is. The more I uh, uh, make sure I'm in the Word, the more you make sure you're in the, in the Word, the stronger the church is. And so we've been asking ourselves, what are some ingredients, some things that we can add into our lives that, we can, that can help build up, not just me and build up you, but actually build up the church together? How do we build how do we build a strong church? Or how does the Lord, rather, build a strong church through us? How does that happen? And so we've been looking at Nehemiah because in the book of Nehemiah, Yes, he's, build, he's rebuilding the wall of, of Jerusalem. However, there's some incredible leadership qualities that happen, happen there with Nehemiah and some ingredients that he puts in place that build up not just a wall. That, that was just a tangible thing, but actually, actually kind of was helping to be, rebuild the nation of Israel, and not just physically, but actually spiritually. And so today, uh, we're going to talk about money, but I'm going to kind of catch you up to where we've been if this is your first time with us. The first thing we talked about was prayer. One of the first things that Nehemiah did was he had a commitment to prayer. And if we're going to be a strong me, be a strong you, and we're going to be a strong we, we need to make sure that prayer is in our foundation. That not just together, when we're, when we're here with one, uh, that, that, but also we want to make sure that individually that prayer is a key component in our walk with Christ. And it is. If it was key to Jesus, it is one of the things that Jesus did, in fact, so much so that his apostles said, no, no, you've got to teach us how to pray. And, and, and they weren't just talking about nuts and bolts. They, were, they, were, they watched Jesus. They would watch him pray, get up early. It was, it was an emphasis that he had in his ministry. And they said, no, no, you've got to teach us how to do what you do. And then you get to the book of Acts, and you see these apostles putting it into action. We see guys like Peter uh, going up on the rooftop to pray, seeing a vision of the sheet coming down, and God saying, no, listen, i got something for you to do. And so him traipsing off to go find a Gentile by the name of Cornelius. And it was, it was a key ingredient in their lives, and it's something that we need to make sure that we have in our life as well. We also talked about the importance of servant leadership, how important it is for us to serve. Especially in our day and age when people are kind of, you know, they hear about church and they're like, eh. You know, they've been, they, maybe they've been there before, had a bad experience, or they've been there before and went, ah, I didn't really like it. And so they're like, nah, no thank you. And so when they hear about church, they're like, nah, they, they immediately kind of push it to the side. But when we get together and we serve people in the community, then they go, wait a minute, this is different than what I remember church being. And we want to make sure that we build up a strong uh, uh, servant leadership within us so that, we can, th so that we will serve those around us. So that when we come in to this gathering here, we don't go, okay, I'm here, serve me. You do, you know, give me what I'm, 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 I want or I need, give, me, give it to me. But that we come in expecting, how can I serve? How can I bless? How can I uh, encourage someone today? And we talked about that a few weeks ago. You guys did an incredible job working with Parkview High School uh, uh, in the concession stand serving uh, uh, food and, and getting there just a little bit early to help out with senior night for basketball. It's incredible things. People saw that. People watched that. And those are some of the types of things that we want to see as we move into the future. But having a strong servant leadership builds a strong, strong church. We also talked about having unwavering perseverance. 
and how Nehemiah uh, encountered a lot of criticism, uh, him and the Israelites, from outside the walls, and how ha- they had to persevere in the, in, in the midst of all of that. And as we talked about last week, about how to persevere through those things. Now, if you miss those sermons, and you say, man, I wish I could catch up, you can do that. You can go back on mc3.life, and you can check out all those sermons there. Today, uh, we are going to be talking about the importance of obe- obedience in giving. We are going to talk about money. I know that sounds kind of weird because some of you, maybe this is the first time you've come back to church. He's like, the last time I, I was at church, I was kind of, kind of uh, sideways on church because all they talked about was money. And we don't always talk about money here, but there are times where we will bring it up and we will kind of remind ourselves what Scripture says about what that looks like. And so today we're going to unpack this because in Nehemiah, this becomes an issue. There are financial issues that actually stifle the Word of God, and, and stifle the work of ministry. Now, here at MC3, we have always say this. Uh, we always say this. We have two rules in giving when, when, it, when it comes to here. Two rules. One, you give what the Lord asks you to give, okay? And, that you, and number two, you give cheerfully, okay? So we want you to keep those in mind. So if you fall asleep here in just a little bit, and then you wake up, and that we want you to make sure that you know that. When, when it comes to giving, we want you to give what the Lord asks you to give, and we want you to give cheerfully. So keep that in mind as we move forward into this. So um, there's no doubt, there's no doubt uh, that uh, money factors to ministry in this world. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. Money is kind of like the oil that lubricates uh, the the engine of ministry, so to speak. Uh, Money isn't everything at MC3 or money isn't everything in churches. It's it's a tool, just like computers are a tool or just like... um, uh, 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 coffee uh, that we had out here is kind of a kind of a tool for ministry, right? For us to get a chance to uh, hang out with one another, it's just it's just simply a tool in ministry. Money is the same way. Sound equipment, all that. It's just a, that everything that uh, that we use as tools, like sound equipment and band equipment and rent for this place and coffee happens to cost money. And so it's just kind of that oil that drives the engine of ministry just the way it is. As we look forward to, um, to where God is leading us, you know, we're kind of in the midst of this, the beginning of this process looking at, okay, so if we get a location and we get a building, what do we want that building to do? What do we want it to look like? And so we start, uh, um, you know, we're just now at the beginning stages of kind of visioneering some of those things. But as we think and as we look and as we talk, money drives that, right? And so it's the, it's the oil that drives that engine. So as much as we think about the fact that um, uh, we don't like to talk about money, money's a part of things uh, because it's a part of our life, it's a part of our world, and ministry drives off of that. And so if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Nehemiah chapter 5. This is where we're going to kind of launch pad uh, from here, Nehemiah chapter 5. Uh, we're going to look at this and look at how Nehemiah had to deal with some of the opposition not just from the outside, because you remember last week we talked about the opposition from the outside by a couple of guys, one by the name of Sanballat and the other guy by the name of Tobiah, and how they were intimidating uh, Nehemiah and the, and the, uh, the Israelites, how they were uh, giving out false accusations against Nehemiah, uh, even trying to plot to maybe even kill Nehemiah. Uh, and so all, these, all this opposition was coming from the outside in Nehemiah chapter 4. Today, what we read in Nehemiah chapter 5 is there's issues and troubles and challenges inside the walls inside the walls. And those challenges were financial challenges in many, many ways. And it was, it was directly impacting the work of the ministry to which God had called the people of Israel. So I want you to read with me in Nehemiah chapter 5, starting in verse 1. Here's what it says. Now, the men and their wives raised a great outcry against the fellow, their fellow Jews. Some were saying, we, our sons and daughters, are numerous. In order for us to eat and stay alive, we must get grain. Others were saying, we are mortgaging our fields and our vineyards and our homes to get grain during the famine. And still others were saying, we've had to borrow money to pay the king's tax on our fields and vineyards. Although we are the same flesh and blood as our fellow Jews, and though our children are as good as theirs, yet we've had to subject our sons and daughters to slavery. Some of our daughters 
have already been enslaved, but we are powerless because our fields and our vineyards belong to others. And so what we see here is that money issues were directly impacting God's work. Directly impacting God's work. And some of these in different little ways. In verse 2, some of the people were saying, hey, listen, we need to get grain. They had put so much of their energy and their time and their effort into building, rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem that they neglected their day job. And because of that, they didn't get any grain. They, they weren't out in the fields doing some of those things. And so because they, they put all of their focus and energy into this, this, one, this one thing, they were like, hey, we need, we need, we need to, uh, to get some grain. We need that next. And then, then some of the other problems were this. Uh, some were experiencing many problems. Maybe we might say to no fault of their own, although uh, spiritually Malachi would say there are some different things going on. We'll talk about this in a second. But there was a famine going on. There was a famine going on, and because of that, it was driving the food costs up. And so they started mortgaging their property just to make sure they could make ends meet in order, to, in order just, to, just to eat. And others were hurting financially because of taxes, which was driving the cost of living up. And so they were borrowing money, selling their... Uh, you can, and you could do this back in the day uh, in, in Israel. In fact, you could even see in the Old Testament it allotted for this. That if you needed, if, if you were strapped for cash uh, and, uh, and you needed money, then you could actually put yourself into slavery for uh, up, to, up to seven years, six years. Uh, seventh year, you got, you got kicked off. Uh, and so you could do that. And so that's what was happening here. They were like, man, we need money. And so they were, they were, they were selling their children, I guess you might say, or their children were going into slavery uh, um, to their fellow Jews for a time in order uh, for they, them to have, have money to eat. And so here, the basic issue is this. Their outgo was more than their income. Their outgo was more than their income, and they were having struggles. And so uh, even though it looked as, and here's the thing, even though it looks, as we look on paper, you look and go, well, it looks like their issues were financial. Actually, it was more of a spiritual nature when we look a little bit closer. In Nehemiah chapter 5, verses 6 through 10, so reading on, Here's, here's what happens next. In, in light of all these things that are going on, Nehemiah says, When I heard the outcry of these charges, I was very angry, and I pondered them in my mind. And then I accused the nobles and, and the officials. Now, in that, that's a great leadership, right? Nehemiah said, I heard all this, and he, his, his, his anger began to flare. Notice that he pondered those things before he went and talked to the nobles, you know. So be careful when you're at, at when you're at work and you get very angry because something a, a coworker does, and be, make sure you ponder that before you type out that email, right, and hit send uh, and and, uh, and and send it to everybody. And so he kind of weighs this in his mind. And this is what it says. He says, "I told them, you are charging your own people interest." And so I called together a large meeting to deal with them, and I said, as far as possible. I have bought back our fellow Jews who were sold to the Gentiles. Now you are selling your own people, only for them to be sold back to us. They kept quiet because they could find nothing to say about this. And so I continued, what you are doing is not right. Shouldn't you walk in the fear of God to avoid the reproach of our Gentile enemies? I and my brothers and my men are also lending the people money and grain. But let us stop charging interest. And so the Jewish nobles were sinning against God's word, charging their fellow Jews interest. In fact, it goes directly against God's word. In Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 19 and 20, it says that you shouldn't do this. And so because of that, this, what they were going through, the point of it is this. Their disobedience, their financial disobedience against God's word was stifling the work of God. It was stifling the work of the Lord. And so, what do we learn from this passage? What do we learn from Nehemiah chapter 5? What do we walk away with at the end of the day? Well, first of all, this. Financial decisions are spiritual decisions. Financial decisions are spiritual decisions. We often want to separate, in some ways, our money from what from, from, our, from, from God, right? From our Christianity. We sometimes want to separate that, but we can't separate that. We can't separate that because God has given us those finances, and yet we want to make sure that we do what we can with those finances. We are stewards 
as we see in Matthew 25, of everything that God has given to us. And so how do we manage that? How do we manage that uh, and make good financial decisions? Because we have to first understand that our financial decisions are really, they're really spiritual decisions. Uh, if, if, if you're going to buy a house, that is a spiritual decision. Uh, if you're, it's not just a financial one. If you're going to buy a, uh, buy a new car, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a spiritual decision just as much as it is a financial decision. Even I would even say even kind of going out of the realm of, 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 of actual money ch- changing, changing hands, even the jobs we choose, the career choices that we make, even the education uh, that we get, uh, is, is a spiritual decision, not just a personal decision. Making good financial decisions, saving money, spending with, within our means, investing wisely are important spiritual decisions that can help us uh, to give and to partner in ministry the way God wants us individually to do that. And yet the flip side is also important because if we make bad financial decisions, it prevents us from giving. It prevents us from partnering with God in ministry. And so what we find is that uh, our financial decisions are really spiritual decisions. Caleb is going to, to GGC, uh, uh, Georgia Gwinnett College, and so uh, he's a freshman this year. He's got one semester under his belt, got this semester going on. Uh, and so he's also, he's also got a job on campus. He works in a library, uh, to which we hope he actually uses the library, uh, but um, he's working in a library, and so he's making a little bit of dinero, right? He's making a little bit of money. Uh, and now to his credit, Caleb does it. Is Caleb even here? Okay, I can talk about him then. Okay, so, um, so he's over at Children's Ministry uh, doing, doing something over there. So uh, Caleb is making a little bit of money, uh, and to his credit, he doesn't spend hardly anything. Uh, and, uh, and so, uh, you know, maybe just uh, food he might eat uh, or, uh, or the gas that he might get uh, in, his, in the car, and that sort of thing. And so the other day, uh, he's got this money, and he just kind of banks it up. In fact, it's a joke in our house that Caleb's got more money than even Christy and I do, it seems like, at least more ready cash. And so Caleb, Caleb was at the gas station the other day, and he calls me up. And so he says, hey, Dad, there's a guy up here. He needs some gas. And I'm like, all right, so what you going to do? And he says, well, I've already, I, 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 I helped him out. He needed like $15, and I had, 50, I had $15, so I gave him $50. And I said, that's cool. And so what's interesting is that his decision to give that $15 wasn't just a financial decision. It was a spiritual decision. Here's a person that needed help, and so he, that he, was, he was accosted by this person. And so he helped out because he realized, hey, I've got $15. I can do that. And so he was able to help out uh, this person uh, in, in, in ministry in some ways because he knew he had it. Now, if he looked at his wallet and he knew his bank account, he knew he'd been, he'd been spending and he has zero, he knew he couldn't help someone out in that situation. Yet, because he doesn't spend anything... Uh, maybe because he uses our money, you know, uh, didn't have to spend anything. Uh, he was able to, to help this person out. And it's kind of the, in the same way we have to understand that if we want to help and partner in ministry, that we need to make sure that we're making good financial decisions so that we can do and give what God asks us to do and give. Financial decisions are really spiritual decisions. So the question is, how do we make the right choices in all this? How do, we, how do we make the right choices? How do we approach this? Knowing kind of the overarching thing, yeah, okay, I get it, Art. Financial decisions are spiritual decisions. So what do we do with this? What, what, how, how does the, where does the rubber meet the road in all of this? Well, I think the first step is, and again, it's, just, it's the very first step, is to pray for financial wisdom. That we just pray for financial wisdom. God, you've got to let me know, how, how do you want me to manage your money? How do you want, what do you want me to do with this? What, what do you want me to buy? Do I need to buy this? Now, of course, you know, if you go to Quick Trip and you get a Coke and a candy bar, it probably doesn't warrant a, uh, a prayer. Maybe the only prayer you need to pray is, Lord, should I have a candy bar and actually drink a Coke, you know, as opposed to water and something else. But nonetheless, but if it's, a, if it's buying a car, now that's something maybe we need to be going to the Lord and go, go Lord, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, um, uh, to bring you into this decision. I'm going to ask you, should I buy this car? 
you know, should I buy a Yugo? Have you ever heard, you ever remember the Yugo? Anybody ever remember those back in the day? Uh, I, and I don't know if you remember these or not. That maybe for some of our, uh, our students, they're like, a Yugo, what in the world is that? Well, hey, listen, I found this on YouTube. I want you guys to see uh, this commercial uh, here for a Yugo. Check this out real quick. Everybody needs a Yugo sometime. I bought my Yugo because now I can afford a brand new car. I think it's fun to drive, and it beats my old carpool. I like the rack and pinion steering and the front wheel drive. We wanted a dependable second car. And this Yugo's just what we need. The 87 Yugo GV is still only $39.90. Call 1-800-USA-YUGO for the dealer nearest you. Everybody, Everybody needs a Yugo sometime. sometime. So, you remember the Yugos? Okay. So, those Yugos, that was back in 1986, okay, uh, if you were alive back in those days. Uh, and those were uh, considered one of the worst cars in history as a Yugo. And there wasn't much go in the Yugo. Uh, and so, you know, I always, always think it's funny that the guy says, uh, I really love the rack and pinion steering, you know. And so, yeah, because that's, that's about all you can really say about a Yugo, right? Uh, and so, it was one of the worst cars to buy, although it was only $39.90, right? Uh, but, uh, but you didn't really get in many places. And so you see, when you look at, should I buy, <laughs> Lord, should I buy a Yugo? I, you know, the Lord's probably going to go, nah, I think you need to buy something a little bit different than that. You see, the wisest decisions that we make is, is first bathed, I believe, in prayer. It's first bathed in prayer. That we take the opportunity to invite the Lord into our financial world. Because we recognize it's his money that he's given to us. And so he can help us to know what the wisest way is that we need to spend that money. You know, Lord, should I buy a Yugo? Should I, should I buy a timeshare? Uh, you know, uh, Lord, how, how do you want me to manage what you have given to me? And I think the first thing that we need to do is we just need to pause. And I know it's, you know, like, man, it's just a car. I know, but, I mean, it's money. It's, king, it's in, in some ways, it's kingdom money that we're given to, so we can get from place to place and point A to point B. Uh, and so it may seem kind of silly sometimes to at, invite God into that, but it's a financial decision, and financial decisions are spiritual decisions. And so where do we start? Well, we start with prayer. And then once we pray, then we just obey what the Lord says that we should do. And this is what the Israelites were struggling with, when we get here into this passage of Scripture, they forgot or just failed to follow God's commands. And so what we see in Scripture is that the tithe is God's guideline, His baseline for giving. And so we need to follow His guideline for giving. Now, in Scripture, the tithe is a tenth of our income. Uh, you might uh, remember uh, that we uh, mentioned uh, uh, at the very start of the series that Malachi, uh, in the very, the very last book of the Old Testament, the prophet Malachi and Nehemiah and Ezra were all contemporaries. In other words, they all lived at the same time uh, with one another there in Israel. And it's interesting because many, of the, many experts believe that Malachi wrote his book in the in-between time, when Nehemiah came to Jerusalem, and then when he left and went back to Persia, before coming back the second time, that in that in-between time, when Nehemiah was gone, and everything started to fall apart, Malachi wrote his book right in the midst of all of that. And it's interesting because Malachi takes a certain portion of his book, and he writes about their financial decisions or their spiritual decisions. This is what he says in Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. This is what he says. Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offering. You're under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. And so we look at this and we go, well, it seems as if their financial issues were not just financial issues, but they were spiritual issues, that they were, they were outright disobeying what God had asked them to do, and so therefore... They were undergoing all of this struggle and stress and all these financial challenges that were surrounding them. Apparently, this idea of giving was an issue, was an issue for them. 
even, even as they returned in to, from captivity in Persia. And so Malachi reminds us that the tithe is God's baseline for giving. Tithes are 10% of our income, and offerings are over and above anything above that 10%. And so as, and I, I love it when Leslie says this. So here's the real talk, right? Here's, here, let's get real real quick with this. When we hear all this, we go, okay, I know, I know. 10%, I hear about that, I heard about that, Art. I get it. So what does God really here, here, what does God really need our money for? Let me think about this for a second. Let's just do, as, as he says, serious talk. What does God need our money for? Doesn't, as Scripture says, doesn't God own the cattle on a thousand hills? Isn't everything that we have already his? Why does he need our money? What's the big deal? What's the big deal on whether I tithe or not? What's the big deal with this? In many ways, kind of who cares? It's all God, so why does he care about that? Well, here's the thing. In many ways, tithing has very little to do with money. Tithing has very little to do with money, but it has everything to do with faith. It has everything to do with faith. Giving 10% is a step of faith. And when we give 10%, and we're trusting God that he will do what he says he will do. You give the 10%, and I'll take care of you. I'll bless you. I'll watch over you. I'll make sure you're taken care of. And so it is, when we step out and we obey God, we're putting our faith in him to say, okay, God, I'm going to trust you. Because, I mean, think about this for a second. In your budget, 10% is kind of a big deal. I mean, think about the things you could do with 10% of your income. Think about that. And for some of you, you're on a fixed income, right? And so it's harder. You're like, you're kind of going, okay, I'm counting the beans and I'm thinking, oh, uh, I, got, I got retirement coming up or you're in retirement and you're hoping that everything will stretch out. You start going, okay, I may need that 10%. I may need that in my budget. Some of you are like, hey, listen, I've got 2.5 kids. I've got a mortgage. I've got, I've got a car payment that's not a Yugo. It's not $39.90, okay? Uh, and I've got, I've got uh, school programs. And if you know any school program, it, you kind of feel like you're being nickel and dimed, right? Because you've got to do this. You've got to raise money for that. And you've got to get this. And it, I'm telling you something. If you've got elementary and, uh, and middle school students, it doesn't get easier in high school, does it, guys? Because you do a sport or something like that, it gets expensive. And so you've got all these fine finances and then you and then uh then if you know if you land on chance and you know you got to pay the 15 dollar uh poor tax uh or if you uh you know if, or if you're playing monopoly and you're like man i got the board i'm a board of directors and now i got to pay 50 dollars to every player are you kidding me all these little things start adding up and that's just the way it happens life just happens that way and so we start looking at the finances that God has given to us, and we think, well, Lord, I, I really kind of need that 10%. I kind of need that. And so what do we do? You know, serious talk, what do we do with this? Well, first thing is this. Start somewhere. Start somewhere. Start somewhere. The incredible thing is God always meets us where we are. He always meets us where we are. We see this all throughout Scripture. If you can start at 2%, start at 2%. If, it's, if you can start at 5%, start at 5%. If you can start at 7%, start at 7%. But start somewhere. Start somewhere. And we always, we always kind of, we always kind of lay this out there because we want to make sure that we pull the church out of it just a little bit because this is really about your relationship with God, Right? And so if you're a little bit skeptical going, yeah, but Art, all you want is just the money for the church. That's all, that's all you want. Well, then we're going to pull ourselves out. If you've never tried, if you've, if you've never tried tithing, I want to challenge you to do that. You give it to whatever charity you want. Try it. Try it. Test God and see. It's one of the few things that God says, test me in this. Test me and see if I won't throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing, you won't be able to contain it all. And so we, we want to encourage you uh, to, uh, uh, to add that in, add that into your life. Start somewhere. And then if you start at 2%, then maybe the next year it's 3%, or maybe the next pay period it's, it's 4%, or whatever that might be. But the, the key is to start somewhere. Number two, pray and ask the Lord to show you what he wants you to give. I mean, honestly, invite him into that. Lord, here I am. Here's my finances. I don't see where it's all going to come from, where it's all, what you're going to do, how you're going to, make, how you're going to allow me to be able to, to give what you're asking me to give. 
Show me what you want. To honestly go to him and say, God, what, what do you want me to give? And I think that should be done well before you come in here. You know, as, as uh, Will gets up and the offering bucket's getting ready to pass, you go, oh, uh, God, what do you want me to give? I'll look at my wallet. Uh, well, it looks like it's going to be a dollar today because that's what I've got in my wallet, right? This is something that we plan out and that we seek God on, not just on Sunday morning, just before offering, but that we do in the future. For some of you students, you guys got, you guys got new jobs. You guys, uh, um, you, you need to start now in this. You need to start now in, in thinking about inviting God into into finances because our financial decisions are really spiritual decisions. So we pray, but also, too, number three, once, we, once the Lord tells us what to give, then we give it first. We give it first. Let that be your first fruits. Paul writes uh, to the Christians at Corinth, and in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2, this is what he says, On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income. So there you go. So in keeping with your income, right? Saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. It's first fruits. And so when, when, you, when you pray and seek the Lord, and you say, God, what do you want me to give? I'll give whatever you, whatever you want me to give. And God says, here, I'm going to slide this number across. And you look at that number and you go, okay, I got it. I'm going to obey you in that. Then give that first. Give that first. Trust in him and give that first. Number four, when you give, give cheerfully. Give cheerfully. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, remember this, whoever sows sparingly, will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion. Wait for it. Here it is. For God loves a cheerful giver. He loves a cheerful giver. And we want want to be a church that sows generously with our time, with our talents, and with our money. The God, what God has given to us, the financial blessings he's given to us, we want to we sow generously with his finances. Financial decisions are spiritual decisions. And a strong church makes wise financial decisions. You know, we've, we've, we've got um, great elders doing some, doing some incredible things. Uh, just to let you know, they've taken some of uh, the, the money that we had from the sale of the building uh, and have, have put it into places where it'll, it'll, make, it'll make money. Uh, something, that, though, that's liquid that we can pull out if we find a piece of property or that sort of thing, which, by the way, we're looking for all those types of things. Like I said, God's drilling down on what that building's going to look like, how we're going to use that for His glory and for His purposes and His kingdom uh, here in this community. He's working through all that. But even having said all that, At the end of the day, these things are expensive. These things are expensive. Uh, And so as we look forward, as we look forward, we want to make sure that as we're building up a strong church so that we can do the work that he's called us to do. In many ways, in many ways, once we have a location, our hope is that we'd love to be able to duplicate that somewhere else. And so that, 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 that we're always looking forward, always looking to what God has for us to do next, that we're always looking for what, what we need to do uh, as, we, as we move forward, that we never stop, that we just continue to do things. And that, that takes, unfortunately, in this world, it takes money in order for that to happen. And so we want to make sure that we uh, encourage our people to give, uh, to give in a healthy way, uh, but to give what God asks us to give and just to give it just to give it cheerfully. And so what do you do with all this? Well, uh, there's a story about a family in Dallas who struggled teaching their kids servanthood and about um, uh, what it means to give and, and to love others. Uh, their financial decisions uh, had, had, had led to other spiritual consequences. See, they had, they had more money than they knew what to do with. And their kids had everything they could ever want. And they, and they took their wealth for granted. And so to change their attitude, the dad announced uh, right around uh, Thanksgiving time uh, that they were going to do something special at Thanksgiving. 
The kids were thinking, hey, that's great. Maybe, uh, maybe the Bahamas. Uh, they're thinking maybe uh, parasailing and being on the beach, those types of things. But dad had other, other things in mind. His thoughts were of helping out at the local mission, helping out the, at the local homeless mission. And so he announced that they were going to spend the day helping the poor and the homeless. And their response was, we're going to do what? Come on, Dad, are you kidding me? We've never done this before. Why would you do that now? And so they, they uh, uh, raised a few questions. But they went. They went. And so on Thanksgiving, they hustled down to the mission. They served up turkey and dressing. They sliced pumpkin pie. Uh, they refilled numerous cups of coffee. They entertained the little kids that were there at the mission. They played games. They listened to some of the stories of the older people uh, as they told about their life. And at the end of the day, they said, Dad, we, we want to go back to the mission and serve. We want to go back at Christmas time uh, and, and serve dinner. Can we go back? And so they did. And that that family began to see that there was a marked difference. A change in their home had taken place. The kids didn't seem to be taking things for granted anymore. Parents found them uh, more serious, more responsible. And in many ways, yes, it was late because they were teenagers. But at least it was a start. At least it was a start. And perhaps for you and for me, we just need to start. We just need to start. Do what God asks us to do. Financial decisions are spiritual decisions. And for some of you, maybe maybe the, the first decision you need to make has nothing to do with money, but has everything to do with just giving your life to Him. Some of you have have may have have never been baptized into Christ. You need to make that decision. You need to make that decision today. Today. Maybe for some of you, uh, you, you, you've already, you're already already baptized in Christ, but you haven't joined, you really haven't joined a C group. You know, you've kind of danced around that, like, okay, I keep hearing about it, but I don't know if I want to show up and that sort of thing. I'm telling you something. Will was right. C groups are phenomenal. We had a great, we had a great time uh, over at, uh, at our hacienda. I just know that because that's, that's, I, I was there. Uh, I know, I'm sure uh, Jerry and Dan, you guys had a great time at yours the other night as well. I'm going to tell you something. If, if Just show up. Come, just be there. If you're going to come, if you're going, if you want to come to ours, we're at forty nine ninety five Chartley Circle. You'll see that in the email. So if later on I can, you can write it down for some of you that are uh, maybe you want to know now. I can now I know where he lives at, so I can uh, you know do whatever. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, but come and, and just you know bring a dish to share. Uh, I made some I made some ham and cheese sliders. Uh, Barbara Connor uh, made um, some uh, some egg salad sandwiches. Uh, the McGahees brought uh, chocolate chip cookies, which were the bomb. Uh, and so all these things. So just we just just bring you bring a bag of chips. I don't care. Uh, and we just have a great time being in C group. So if you haven't if you haven't jumped in, I'm gonna encourage you to jump in. Maybe for some of you, it's you need to you need to start serving. That you just need to jump in. Man, I've been tr- I've been I've been meaning to talk to Leslie about coming up and helping out on stage, or I've been meaning uh, to go to children's ministry and help out, or to talk to Will about how I can help out in the living room on Sunday nights, or what that would look like for me. Man, I'm telling you, it's incredible some of the things that are happen happening with our students. You know, for us that are that are that are older adults, and we 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 want to we want to continue to to uh, to move move forward and and push spiritually. But there's a part of me that also knows that we need to make sure that we're pouring into our uh, younger generation, this next generation that's coming up. And it's incredible about eleven uh, for college age, uh, and even more than that for middle school and high school on Sunday nights. Absolutely incredible things happening. And so we want to make sure that we're serving in those areas, and they're going to need us. And you may think, well, I'm too old to do that. That's hogwash. Man, just, just, just come in and have a, have a great time uh, with these students or with these children or whatever it is that you want to serve in. Let me encourage you, if you haven't, haven't stepped up to serve, we're going to need you to serve especially as we look forward into where God may be leading us when we have a new building, we're going to need a lot of help. We're going to need a lot of help, and it's going to be a lot of fun, but we're going to need you to step up and help serve. We just need you to be fully devoted to this. And a a part of that is what we give. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I never know. I never see, our leaders don't see what you give. I I don't really care about that. I just want to make sure that we are teaching and leading what God tells us to teach and to lead. 
And so we're going to jump into a time of communion today. And I'm going to encourage you, because this is a time not just of communion, but it's a time of decision too. We're going to have prayer partners down here. If you want to be baptized into Christ, and you want to uh, bypass me and Will, you come to our prayer partners. They'll, they'll talk with you. They'll start you on those, those first steps. But, um, uh, but come, and, come and see those prayer partners to say, listen, I need to give my life to Christ, and I just need to know, where do I start? They'll help you in that first beginning stages. But you may want to do an end around them and just go right to Will or go right to myself or go right to Jim Barber and say, hey, listen, what do I need to do to make that happen? For some of us, it, it is say, sitting down and going, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do next? You know, I'm here, on, I'm here on Sunday mornings most of the time, right? I'm here. I'm coming. What is it, what's the next step for me? Is it a C group? Is it serving? Is, what, what, is, what is my next step in my giving to you, Father God? This is time of communion where we sit back and we think about the sacrifice that Christ made for us. And then our next thought, at least for me, is how do I take that sacrifice and use it for his glory and for his purposes and so the next natural question is lord how do you want me to sacrifice for you not that we pay him back for what he did because we could never do that but in some ways communion is about not just remembering christ that's a good thing to do but to remember and then to do something about it Lord, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to dig my heels in deeper, and I'm going to follow you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to dig my heels in deeper in faith. And not just dabble in what you've called me to do, but I want to jump headlong into where you've called me to be. So let me encourage you that in this time of communion, when we remember what Christ did for us, how he broke his body for us on that cross, how he took our sins upon himself, And how he poured out his blood for us. Scripture says that by his blood we were healed. By his stripes we were healed. Because of his blood our sins are washed away. And yet, because of all of that, what do we do with that? What do we do? Maybe Maybe you need to be praying about who it is you need to be reaching for Christ. Maybe you need to be praying about who it is you need to invite next week to come and be a part of MC3. Say, no, no, you've got to come check it out. You've got to come be here. Come be here with us. And so during this time of communion, don't let it just be a time of just communion. Let it also be a time of decision where we remember what Christ has done for us and we decide that we're going to follow him even more than we followed him the day before. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your great and mighty love for us. Lord, we don't have to look any further than these emblems to see your love. Lord, if we ever question your love for us, all we have to do is look at the cross. Look at what Jesus did for us. How even though he was without sin, he willingly went to the cross for all of us because of our sin. Father, we thank you for that. We give you praise. We give you glory. But Father, we know that you called us into ministry. You called us to reach the one who's lost in this world. The one that doesn't know you. And so, Father, I pray that, it, Lord, as, as we partake of communion and we, and we remember what you've done for us and remember the sacrifice that you paid for us, we also remember that this sacrifice wasn't just for us, that it was for others as well. And so, Father, we pray that you would use us, that you would use every aspect of our life from where we work, to where we live, even to how we give, that it might impact this world, that it might further the kingdom, that other people could know about you. And so, Father, we pray that you'd use every aspect of who we are. Father, we pray for, the, we pray for us at MC3. Lord, you know our desire. It's not just to just come in here and do this. We love this. This is great. This this is not just it. We want to impact the community around us, Father God. And so, Father, we pray that you would give us inspiration. Lord, that as as we dream, as we dream, we pray that you would help us to dream the way you want us to dream. Lord, if it's bigger than what we than what we can fathom, we pray you'd give it to us, Lord. Lord, help us to reach the people that are around us that need to know you. And so, Father, we pray that you would use us in a mighty way. And so, Lord God, we pray in this time that 
even as we partake of these emblems, that as we draw close to you, that you begin to speak to us quietly, individually, Lord God, as to how we can make an impact for you, for your kingdom, Father God. Lord, help us to give what you ask us to give. Not just out of our bank account, but out of our time and out of our talent and out of our energy and out of our, out of our, uh, uh, our brain power, Father God. Lord, that you would put ideas in our head that could only come from you. Father, use us as a church that would, that would impact the people that you want us to impact. Thank you for your sacrifice, Father God. Bless us today as we partake and as we give ourselves totally to you. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. There are communion tables in the back, uh, and so you don't have to all come down front. You can go to the back as well, uh, and so I encourage you to take it. You can take it back to your seat. If you, if you, if you don't want to get up, uh, just raise your hand. Someone will bring it to you, and they'll be happy to serve you right where you are.
guys hey we're uh super happy you were here with us this morning i forgot a couple announcements earlier so i'm gonna make up for it right now um so if you if you're a student or a parent of a student we have started something new called electives uh and we've got one going on we've got three going on but uh the first our first official one i guess started this morning it's at 9 30 in the kids time room and it's just called jesus 1101 and it's a pretty in-depth study on who Jesus really was and what true Christianity looks like. And so it's going to be led by myself and some of the high schoolers who are a part of our leadership elective uh, that meets uh, Wednesday evenings. Although this week, if you're in that, it'll be Tuesday right after school. Um, but so we've got, and it's over in the kids' time room, and it's from 10, 9.30 to 10.15. Um, so if you've got a student, or if you are a student that would be interested in that, um, come check that out. Electives are pretty much, um, they're all very optional, not optional, but um, they're not mandatory. And so uh, we don't want to be pushed. We don't want to push them into it, but encourage. And if they don't want to be there, then um, 
yeah, I don't want you to push them into it because then it then it's something that they don't want to do. So we want them to to want to be involved in it. Also, I forgot to mention this too. Next Sunday, um, but we've got the living room this Sunday. But also next Sunday, uh, March third, we're doing uh, bring your parents to church Sunday. Even if you don't uh, have a student, we're going to invite the whole church over to our house. Um, I'll give you, if you need to write down our address, I'll say it here in one minute. So if you need to get a pen out or whatever, or your phone, but, uh, five to seven next Sunday, it is going to be a potluck dinner. Um, and so just bring something to share. It doesn't have to be anything special. It could be something from Kroger, but, uh, the students want to invite you guys over to worship, um, and to hang out with us. Our address is, if you need it, five, five, eight, six Crestwood drive. Um, I can shoot, I can put that in the email this week too, just so everyone gets it. We live like two minutes down the road behind the, the uh, Kroger over here off Old Tucker Road. Uh, that's next week, five to seven. Um, if you know any college kids who would like to be involved in our college devotion, that is Tuesday nights at our house at 6.30, and then a special event tomorrow. Some of the um, older, older guys, not older, older, sorry. Some of the older guys in the church, not older, older, uh, have a heart for have a heart for mentoring um, young men. And so if you're a middle school or a high school guy or college guy and want to come over to us at our house as well, tomorrow at 630, we will have dinner. Um, and, and they're going to talk about hot topics in the world. Um, and tomorrow is about fighting. And so if you would like to be involved in that, or if you're adult and would like to help lead out in that, Kemper Smalley is the man to see on that one. Um, but it's going to be hot topics with a biblical uh, point of view, obviously. So that is all I have. I'm going to pray us out. You guys have a great week. See you next Sunday. God, thank you just for giving us this opportunity to come and uh, worship you for who you are. Thank you for uh, just being here with us this morning, Lord, so we can uh, learn to love you deeper um, and learn to love you more. Thank you just for all the blessings you give us. Show us who you want us to disciple to this week, Lord, uh, and show us how to disciple to them and what words they need to hear. In your name we pray. Amen.